yeah. I love my HBCU. Uh. And boy, boy, I love it, love it. Yeah. I love it, love it. Yeah. I love my HBCU. Yeah. And man, yeah. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. Man. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. yeah. I tune into the HCCU Sports Lab to see if my team wanna lose. If they lost, I'm quiet as a mouth. But if they won, keep tab. Uh, I'ma do the dab, yeah. Dr. Cavill, he know what he be talking about. Mike and Charles, they know what they be talking about. They compress the analytic data with the hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they wanna lose. And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, uh, yes sir, yes, and pay attention, boy. cause he gonna teach a lesson. Yes. This is Dr. Ville with Inside the HBCU Sports Lab with Charles Bishop. So we're doing our traditional Thursday day clip. So you know that means we'll get into a little basketball. We'll give you some mid-major love and then give you some games of the week at the major division level and see what Charles thinks in terms of what's going on around the general HBCU landscape. I'll bring my normal information as well. Let's see if Charles want to test or tease me out a couple of questions here and there. We'll see what his on his mind and what's going on in the landscape. But with that being said, let's give everybody a big welcome. Welcome to episode 487 of Inside the HBCU Sports Lab Radio Show and Podcast, the show that's covered in sporting HBCU Dash for all things HBCU sports for institutions large and small, from the NEIA to the NCA. We share insights and information on the HBCU sports culture, HBCU athletic aesthetics to facilitate the story of HBCU athletic programs and the business of HBCU sports. I'm your host, Dr. Kenyatta Cavill, along with my co-host, Charles Bishop. We're filming from our home studios and sending a signal live. KCOH 1230 AM studios with the Texas Radio Hall of Fame. Multi-Hall of Famer Ralph Cooper in the beautiful home of Texas Southern University from Houston, Texas. Charles, before you get into some of the new news of the day, I'd be remiss if I didn't go back and kind of review the baseball trappings that we talked about yesterday, all the great interviews that you were able to put together. And if I must admit, allow me to participate a little bit and take in some <laughs> of that with you. Uh, but in all serious kudos for those that didn't catch the live show, you can go to uh, YouTube, check us out at Inside HBC Sports Lab. As you know, for those that are following us there, you may have seen the clip. That is episode 486. So as we get to it, a um, little closer, Charles, a little closer to 500. Yeah. Too far yeah. away, Baker's dozen right at the tip of it, if you would, uh, plus one, as they say. But before I talk more about that, what's your general thoughts in terms of what was going on in the baseball world? How did you think – everything went uh and anything that stood out to you in regards to what you heard with the interviews yesterday yeah i think what stood out uh definitely was uh you start taking a look around the swag east and i think uh we had uh the top three teams especially when you take a look at uh, uh fam you alabama state bethune cookman in terms of their perspectives on this upcoming season uh all three uh teams are locked and loaded i mean when you talk about uh alabama state bringing back seven uh, in uh, seven returning starters, uh, uh, infield and outfielders, uh, uh, pitching staff that will be somewhat uh, uh, broken in. Same thing, Bethune Cookman bringing in uh, SWAC uh, preseason pitcher of the year and Daniel Gavaria. Uh, Fam, you bringing back a ton of uh, players as well. So, uh, you know, I, I think we're going to get some some great baseball. Uh, I think Coach Michael Robinson talked about it with Texas Southern. I mean, uh, the West will be. Uh, just as interesting when you take a look at the teams over there uh, with Texas Southern, the Prairie View, and Grambling, uh, duking it out. And, and everybody seemed to mention uh, uh, Mississippi Valley State, Alabama a and their programs uh, getting much better. So really looking forward to the season in terms of uh, things jumping off this Friday. Of course, we got the Cactus Jack Classic happening here in Houston. Uh, we got the Andre Dawson Classic happening uh, next weekend, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and then uh, the, the MLB uh, uh, Classic as well. So uh, a lot of great baseball on tap. And then, you know, we'll get some uh, interesting mid-major or midweek games, I should say. And then we roll our way into conference play. So I'm looking forward to a great baseball season. And, and softball, they've started as well. Talked to a few softball players today. 
Uh, they're excited about the season, so we want to make sure we uh, show that same love to the softball players as well. I like that, that you made sure that we got some information in on softball as they get excited and ready for the grind of their season to see who comes out and wins divisional conference and then tournament championships this season. You know, you have your front runners, but can somebody knock them off, sneak in there and get it done? Can Prairie View go for three? Mm -hmm. uh, can Alabama State get back in the mix? Can FAMU, uh, one of the other programs, find a way to kind of topple down? Can Texas Southern find a way to get back into a little bit of the softball business, if you would? So fascinating to see what's going on there. Today's episode of Inside the HBC Sports Lab is sponsored by THG Agency, LLC. THG Agency is a company that provides sporting and educational and consulting and data analytics. With that being said, let's get into this week in HBCU sports. What's hot? What's not? What's on your mind? Yeah, well, actually, I, I got this today, uh, uh, and we had him on the show just last night. Alabama State's uh, coach, Jose Vasquez, has been named the manager of the 2024 Collegiate National Team. That's huge. That speaks volumes uh, about the, 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 the type of coaching. Uh, that is uh, in the swag uh, for Jose Vasquez to be named the manager of the 2024 Collegiate National Team. So kudos go out to uh, Alabama State's baseball coach, Jose Vasquez. Good stuff. Kudos, kudos. Let me go off on this, and I'll kind of bring this out, and I want to get your thoughts on this. You know, you have the Red Tails Classic that's run by ESPN, and it's events. Uh, they have announced uh, the teams that will be participating, obviously, you know, Tuskegee in the previous year has been Fort Valley State. It was an SIAC matchup that did not count in the conference standings. But this year it goes to Johnson C. Smith Golden Bulls. So this creates a CIAA SIAC matchup. Golden Bulls have kind of been on the rise. Obviously, they played in the uh, Florida Beach Bowl, if you would, uh, in terms of that matchup. What are your general thoughts in seeing another one of these? CIAA, SIAC matchups, Tuskegee, Johnson C. Smith. Any thoughts on, you know, talking a little bit of football as you'd love to find a way to sneak in there? I did it for you. Well, yeah. I can't blame you on this one. Yeah. What are your thoughts yeah. on that? Well, I think this is big. I mean, especially when you take a look at Johnson C. Smith uh, coming off a 7-3 season. Uh, CIAA South uh, runners up to Fayetteville State uh, played in the Beach Bowl, uh, and they kicked things off against Tuskegee. Aaron James is uh, – uh, uh, resurging, if you will, that Tuskegee program. Uh, they are coming off a 73 season uh, where they were right behind Benedict and, Al and, and Albany State. So uh, this should be a great uh, game to kick things off. Red Tails Classic, first time they've seen each other since 2012. So uh, we get an opportunity to check, check uh, a little SIZ CIAA uh, action out and kind of uh, get a little bragging rights there in terms of uh, who's doing what. Good stuff. I like that. Let me stick with you and go over to you. Shout out to Brother Herman Shelton. He must have heard us talking a little bit about him last week, so he got in here and could represent himself. It's too late. We didn't already put your stuff out there, Sherman. Then we got uh, much folks in the lab giving us love. What other news do you want to talk about today? What's on your mind? Well, as we don't have Mike on the show tonight, but historic matchup when we talk about uh, this happening uh, where you have uh, University of District Columbia. Uh, they will visit Virginia State this Saturday uh, for a doubleheader in lacrosse. Doc. Uh, it will mark the first time in the history that two Division II HBCUs will square off in men's and women's lacrosse. So uh, for all the lacrosse lovers out there, this is a huge one with regards to two uh, Division II HBCUs squaring off. Man, you know Mike will have a field day if you had yeah. out there and talking about that. And this is on the women's side. So it'll be fascinating to see what that looks at. Obviously, Virginia State, UDC, uh, for those that may not be as familiar, University of District Columbia in terms of a Division II HBCU program, obviously, in Washington, D.C. Not a member of the CIAA. People have for a long time kind of questioned uh, why they haven't been able to find their ways in the conference. For a while, you had the rule of the CIAA where they wanted a football program. Obviously, they don't operate there have had some pretty good basketball programs over the year, but now they're getting into the lost lacrosse business, and that is really highlighted in that area, Charles. And so mm -hmm. I can see the excitement uh, that you're getting into in terms of what that looks like. So very intrigued about what's going on there 
uh, about those matchups. Good things going on across the landscape in terms of HBCU. I'm going to go back to you and see what other direction you want to uh, talk about in terms of news of the day uh, that stands out to you at this time. Yeah, well, this comes in from HBCU Sports. Diamond Johnson has been named a semifinalist for a mid-major uh, award. Uh, Norfolk State's guard Diamond Johnson has been announced as one of the 10 semifinalists for the Becky Hammond Mid-Major Player of the Year Award. Uh, of course, Diamond Johnson in her first season here in Norfolk State after she transferred in from North Carolina State, but uh, she's uh, been tremendous this past season uh, for the uh, Norfolk State uh, uh, Spartans. Uh, Johnson's averaging 20.6 points per game, 5.8 rebounds, 4.1 steals through 12 games with the Spartans. And, of course, the team has a 10-2 and two record with her in the lineup, including six and one record in the MEAC. So uh, Diamond Johnson, I mean, she's a stat stuff for 20 points, five point eight rebounds, four steals. Uh, she's getting it done. Uh, definitely deserving of being in the running for mid-major player of the year award. Man, you just can't get away from football. Uh, obviously it's beneficial. Howard, uh, obviously in Tennessee state homecoming circuit, uh, you getting these brands together. You got the independent program, Tennessee state, you know, for the years they've played mostly teams here and there out of the swag, but now it seems like they're getting a little more uh, feet in the water with these uh, more frequent matchups, I would say, with teams out of the MEAC. Last year was Norfolk State that came down there, and now they will be visiting for HBCU homecoming. It'll be interesting. When's the last time Tennessee State was uh, went on the road for mm. a homecoming against the HBCU? This time they go up to the Mecca, Washington, D.C., Howard University. Uh, what are your thoughts in terms of them traveling uh, to see HBCU not that far path off the beaten path, but the fact that it's in the MEAC and the fact that it's how it's homecoming, which is unique in itself. We have appreciation. Mike may think a little differently about whether that's uh, appropriate homecoming and how, but we'll save that for him in regards to how he goes about it, but. Well, Give me your thoughts on that. Here's how I kind of looked at that, Doc. I mean, wouldn't you love to see Tennessee State with a few more of these matchups? Wouldn't you love to see Tennessee State, you know, where they are geographically located? You know, uh, is this a preview of future contests? Playing some MEAC teams? Uh, is this, will we see Howard on their schedule a little more frequently in the future? Who knows? I don't know. That was the first thing I kind of thought of. Uh, think about it. I mean, Howard put out the fact that they were renewing their classic about Morehouse. You've heard all the talks about Morehouse going Division One. It'd be nice if you could expand with two teams. You know, you go from six football programs to eight. Eight, uh, you know, going from eight basketball programs to ten. And that's significant for a conference. So, yeah, it'd be a little interesting. You could pair Tennessee State with Morehouse College and expansion members. Uh, to the MEAC, you know, mm. to your point, or is Tennessee State going to finally say, well, maybe we should align ourselves with the SWAC. You know, I'm going to sneak out there, if not Morehouse, Clark Atlanta University is all the things they're doing. We'll talk a little bit about their basketball program on the men's side that's really playing uh, big in the latter part of the show as we get into some rankings. Speaking about the rankings, let's take our first break. We'll come back on the other side and get into a little bit on the women's rankings uh, in terms of what that looks like, talk about some of the key matchups possibly, and just your general thoughts on what's taking place in, at the Division II level at the mid-major uh, for women's, and then we'll get into it for the men's in the third quadrant. With that being said, let's take our first break, come back on the other side, and dig into it. We're back. It's time for the 2024 Urban Nerd Con. Join us in Atlanta, Georgia, April 26th through the 28th at the Cortland Grand Hotel. Special guests include Underworld creator Kevin Grievous, Gary Gray from Fairly Odd Parents, from Nickelodeon, Giovanni Samuels, the Science Machine Michael Green, the Sci Fi Sisters, and from Spaceballs and Star Trek Voyager, Tim Russ. Hi, I'm Tim Russ. Join me April 26th through the 28th at the Cortland Grand Hotel in Atlanta, Georgia for the Urban Nerd Con. Our heroes, our villains, our stories, everyone con. I'll see you there. Live long and prosper. 
Visit TheUrbanNerdCon.net to get your buy one, get one free badges before the price increases. Remember, our heroes, our villains, our stories, everyone's con. See you there. Compress that. Compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot, yeah. And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir. And pay attention, cause he gon' teach a lesson. This is Dr. Ville with Inside the HBC Sports Lab. Let's get into these rankings for the mid major division on the women's 2024. It's week six, things are getting far along. Particularly when you talk about the mid-major, obviously you go into the first part of March when you get in your tournaments. But when CIAA is first up, their tournament is literally around the corner about a week away as they start to close things up. You'll see what's going on there. You see some strong matchups that we're looking for in the CIAA. Maybe not so much on the men's. I think it certainly will still be an interesting tournament. But after that tournament, the week after, you have the SIAC. Um, you have your... NIA programs, GCAC, Red River, they get in the mix as they start to close out the season. We'll see what that looks like uh, with the poll rankings and how things start to close. Nobody dropped out this week, but you still have some teams that were receiving those votes that are getting the mix. Look what Savannah State Tigers are doing. They're pushing forward, um, getting uh, in that Eastern Division, starting to solidify themselves right there. They have improved to 16 and 5, 12 and 4. Uh, they had a big weekend with a couple of wins. They did have a loss in there, but they're strong in the mix. And they're right behind them, still in the SIAC. But on the west side, it's Kentucky State Thoroughbreds, 15 and 5, 11 and 3. You know, uh, Kentucky State, the women really started off as uh, really well, undefeated. They had that loss uh, to Miles and kind of stumbled a little bit there, but they're still in the mix, getting it done. And fascinating to see what's going to go on there. In fact, Let's get in our top five as no team dropped out this week. As we get in the top five, we go with number five. We have the Miles Lady Golden Bears, 18 and four, 14 and two in the conference play. Told you what they did against Kentucky State there, solidifying, holding themselves steady. Uh, it seems like they'll be in the mix to see if they can cut down the nets in the tournament. But right now, they want to hold on to that number one seed coming out of the West division of the SIAC. 56 points, number five. Stays there for this week. At number four, yeah, the Virginia State Lady Trojans um, had a pair of wins since the last time we did the poll rankings. Did have a loss in there, so they had 19-4, 10-4 in the conference race. Really steady work there. 51 points. Previous rank four, really good overall record, but they have a couple of teams in the CIAA chasing them getting in the mix and one over them in that side of the division. Bringing us to number three, you have the Xavier Golden Nuggets, 19-4, and 16-2. That's out of the Red River Athletic Conference. Uh, they're trying to see if they can find a way to hold it down over there in the Red River, chasing the team at the top. But they're near the rankings in their conference, playing some good basketball. 60 points, remaining at number three. Bringing us to number two. Uh, as I should say, Xavier had three wins, but bringing us to number two, they had two wins this past week. Fayetteville State Lady Broncos, 20 and two. Getting to the 20 win clip, big time, 13 and one. Three first place votes, 75 points, ranked number two. But all the business is going to Russ Lady Bears. Three mm. wins. Since last time we talked about what they were doing in the rankings, 22 wins on the season, just three losses, 14 and one. And conference play in the GCAC, uh, really looking good. Five first place votes, 77 points, ranking number one. Rust Lady Bearcats are ranked and continue to be ranked at the top of the poll. It doesn't look like they want to let it go. Can they hold on? Can they also uh, ask the additional question after you let me know what are your thoughts in terms of the top five for the mid majors for the women in week number six? Here's the thing that jumps out to me, Doc, with regards to the top five. Tremendous representation across the board when you take a look at the, the SIAC, the CIAA, NAIA opponents, uh, the NAIA teams with the Xavier and Russ. Uh, who do you think with regards to uh, these various uh, uh, divisions, uh, the mid-major divisions, 
what where do you think the, the better basketball is being played at? You know, it's always a challenge when you talk about better basketball because, as you know, this game, you know, there's different styles. And oftentimes conferences ultimately have their styles. A lot of that is about the coaches they bring in. Some of it is historic in nature. I think the depth of the conference that is intriguing with me, frankly, is the GCAC in a lot Mm -hmm. of ways, what they're doing at the NIA level. Mm -hmm. I think Russ, Lady Bearcats kind of – throw off of what you would maybe think in the GCAC. But outside of that top seven receiving votes, just a little further back, it's fifth. Bulldogs are sitting 15 and 7, uh, 12 and 2, so a really good conference record, which means they're right behind Russ in terms of giving them fits. Mm-hmm. And not too far behind that are Philando Smith out of Arkansas to give them a little bit of love. So I'm really glad that you asked this question because it gives us a chance to show okay, some teams that are not in the top five that are having really tremendous seasons. Uh, Philando Smith sits at 19 and six overall. So they're right there at the 20 win mark. The 12 and three in the conference, which means they're just two games back in the loss column in regards to Russ that is dominating everything. Um, so that gives you some indication. And I'll go stay in Louisiana with Dillard, Louisiana. They're 12 and 11 mm. overall. So that doesn't really excite you in terms of what they've been able to do non conference, but in conference rank. Uh, they are 11 and 5. So they're not too far back themselves, at least to climb up the rank. You'd think they'd have a problem catching a rust for the end of the season, but they do have a chance to maybe get into that uh, third seed and maybe find a way and sneak into that second seed. So I think that's some good looks if you think about that. On the other side, you got to look at the SIC. I know a lot of our focus is on the men yeah. because it's so deep on the men's side, right? We show. And when we get to that, I'll tell you about a matchup that you want to keep your eyes on next week uh, that may be uh, played in the SIAC Tournament Champion. We'll see if we can have that off, but I'll save that as a teaser. So make sure you come back and ask me what were my thoughts that I was alluding to in terms of the basketball matchups in the SIAC. But on the women's side, not too bad as well. You have the Miles Lady Golden Bears. We talked about that. Kentucky is looking in there. Then you got Savannah State. So they're really deep playing some good basketball. And I think they probably are right behind GCAC Mm. in terms of the depth. Uh, But I would have to say that they're playing really good. I don't see the depth in the CIAA, but you might argue, uh, as we saw in the rankings with Fayetteville State at two, Virginia State at four, that the top part of that conference with Fayetteville State out of the Southern Division, Virginia State out of the Northern Division, are some of the toughest teams. They have some teams right behind them as well. But those are my general thoughts. And I know that's long-winded to answer your question, but I'm not sure how far these teams are away each other, but those are the ways I look in terms of depth. And then one of the things that really jumps out at me, it's really hard to handicap, I think, the CIAA tournament. When you start taking a look at the Northern Division, Elizabeth City State, 6-1, and one on top of the Northern Division, Virginia Union right behind them. You got Virginia State sitting uh, in your top uh, top five there. Uh, they're right there, 19 and four, four and three. Uh, Fayetteville State has Claflin right on their heels at seven and one. And interestingly enough, Fayetteville's loss in the Southern Division to Johnson C. Smith for uh, a couple of weeks ago, back on January 20th. So uh, I cannot handicap the CIAA tournament. Maybe the closer we get a little bit to it, you know, maybe things kind of come into focus, but that's going to be uh, some exciting basketball. Uh, you let me know if you find some magic. It looks like <laughs> you kind of handicap the CIAA. I think this year I'm just going to sit back and kind of watch yeah. and see how it plays out and, you know, and be surprised maybe. Uh, other than that, I don't think it's fair to really talk about what's taking place uh, in that CIAA in the mixer. I do want to give a little love to the independents when you talk about the fact that you have, when I say independents, I'm talking about those teams that are out there. Langston Lions, the women over there, they sit in the second place in the Sooner Athletic Classic, I mean conference. Obviously on the men's side, it's unarguably who's number one ranking, and rightfully so, they got a lot of love. But you look at Langston Lions, check this out, Charles. Women overall at 19-5. and five. So you have another team that's on the clip of getting – at ranking, um, they're in a position where they should still get a bid to the tournament. Um, overall, national, it'll be depend a little bit of what they do uh, in their conference tournament, but they're 14 and four overall. But they're in the second position in the conference standing, so they're looking really good. 
you know, as Xavier, we talked about them ranked, if you would, obviously in the Red River Athletic Conference. It's intriguing when you talk about them as an independent at the NIA program. They do not play in the HBCU conference, but the Red River has several HBCUs in the conference. Let us not forget about Paul Quinn College, mm. Texas College, Houston Tillerson, right there in the mix. Obviously, in Jarvis Christian. Can't talk about Wiley College. Remember, they exited the Red River and they're over in the GCAC uh, trying to find a way to balance themselves and get back in the mix of what they want to do on basketball, both men's and women's. Uh, but Xavier uh, doing really good. But Texas College on the women's side slipped up right there in the mix with them in a lot of ways. So we'll talk a little bit on the men's side. But Xavier, second place, really holding serve in the Red River Athletic Conference in a lot of ways. So good basketball there. Uh, with that being said, what are your general thoughts on, on some of those independent programs? If you allow me to use that phrase to discuss these teams outside of those uh, HBCU conference, GCAC, CIAA, SIAC. Interestingly enough, you mentioned Langston. They're playing great basketball overall out of Oklahoma. I mean, we, we, we haven't even gotten to the men's side of, of, of the letter yet, because, but we will. <laughs> and when you're talking about what they're doing over there, uh, I mean, tremendous what they're doing both with the men's and women's basketball programs. Uh, and, and until you just said it, I was like, you're right. Langston is playing tremendous over there on the women's side. So uh, great pickup there, Doc. Yeah, thank you about that. Uh, just want to make sure uh, we cover all the bases and share some love. You talk about those two hires. You know, they came in at the same time. Mm-hmm. And obviously Langston really got off the floor really quick. But quietly, you see what the women have built in the Langston Lions over there in the Sooner Athletic Conference. Man, I would love on the men's side, women's side, to get some of these matchups between Xavier and Langston. You know, what would that uh, put us out there in terms of uh, NIA matchup? What about a Langston and a Russ College matchup? Mm. NIA, uh, what does that look like? Uh, home and home series out of conference. Maybe we do it similar to what we talked about baseball uh, between Alabama A&M and Pine Bluff where you flip it. One year it's over here um, at home for Russ and the other year they go to Langston. I like to see some of those matches. Or maybe somebody could put together a really strong classic uh, with some of these top NIA programs or mix it up. Have the top NAIA programs versus top NCAA Division II programs. Either way, I would certainly have my focus in terms of what that looks like. Uh, With that being said, let's take our next break. We'll come back on the other side and give you some thoughts in terms of the mid-major on the men's side. And and we'll see what the rankings are. No surprise in terms of the top, but let's take a deeper dive and maybe talk a little bit about Langston in terms of what they're doing, they're rolling, what type of run they can make in the tournament. And we'll see who else is in the top five. And again, we got to give some love to the SIEC in terms of what they're doing. And we'll see if there are any variables that have changed with those teams over there uh, getting it done on the men's side. With that, stick with us. Be right back after this break. If you think all pads are exactly the same, think again. This is Always Ultra Thins reinvented with the Always Triple Protection System. This pad wicks gushes 90% faster, absorbs even more so you can feel dry, and locks odors in. Rethink your pad for up to 100% leak-free and odor-free comfort with the totally reinvented Always Ultra Thins. This is always like never before. The Cuvée Group is a Florida-based marketing and training consulting firm. We help businesses communicate to their target audience and engage them in conversation. We also help to expand their audiences, which will ultimately result in growth for those organizations. In addition to being a certified constant contact specialist, my colleagues and I are also certified in John Maxwell Leadership Principles. We use these proven principles to conduct workshops, training, and private coaching sessions for individuals and companies looking to take things to the next level. Contact us to schedule a free consultation. Issues today, don't delay, call Cuvay. As technology continues to bring changes to the world of education, it's time we also reimagine teacher professional development. Gone are the days of one-size-fits-all learning that can only be accessed at a specific time and place. 
The Stride PD Center is an on-demand library of mobile-friendly courses that allow educators to learn anytime and anywhere. Our dynamic courses provide bite-sized learning and help educators advance their knowledge while also gaining professional development hours. The best professional development plans are those that include a level of flexibility and choice for educators. Whether you're a teacher, school, or district, visit us today to take charge of your learning. Compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they're going to tell you if your team, if they want to love that and who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor Yes, sir, yes sir. and pay attention because he's going to teach a lesson. Yes. This is Dr. Mill inside the HBC Sports Lab with Charles Bishop, Professor Bishop. Let's get into the men's mid-major side of things in week number six, Dr. Mill's HBCU mid-major division men's basketball poll rankings in week six. Nobody dropped out of the poll in, this week in the top five, but let's get in some of those that are receiving votes. In terms of those teams receiving votes, I snuck this out a little bit. But you have Texas College Steers that are on a run. They just are outside of the top five, but out of the Gulf Coast Athletic Conference, playing some really good – I mean, out of the Red River Athletic Conference, let's say, playing some really good basketball. They sit at 18-5 and five and 14-3. and three. They actually this week passed up Xavier and sit in the second spot in the conference. Xavier right behind them. Texas College Steers does have that head-to-head – Win over Gold Rush, but the Gold Rush come in at 16 and 5, 12 and 4, with 21 points in terms of those teams, two teams outside of the top five receiving votes. We'll talk about maybe a little of the other ones that are something to think about, but let's get in to the top five if nobody dropped out this week and see if there are any changes. There are some changes in position, but let's go to number five. Morehouse Maroon Tigers sit at 17 and 8 and 14 and 4. Uh, they would be one to think about if they weren't playing in that strong East mm. Division of the SIC. Mm. Uh, but they stay at number five, uh, solid. They had two wins and a loss over this past weekend. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how they close down the stretch to finish out the SIC season. At number four, Benedict Tigers, they dropped two spots. You know, they were rolling, ranked top 25 in season, but – because of where they play in that division out there, the Benedict Tigers sit at 19 and 4, 13 and 4 uh, behind Morehouse and Clark Atlanta in that division. One of the questions I have to get in there and talk about postseason, I want to get your thoughts in terms of some of those teams. What are their ch- chances? But at 58 points, they, as I said, were ranked two as they dropped two spots. Bringing us to number three, that's the Tugalu Bulldogs, it should be 21 and 4, 10 and Two, 64 points. They move up a spot from number four as they continue to win. They had three big wins since the last time we ranked our mid-major rankings. So uh, they are playing some really good basketball over there, getting it done in GCAC, giving you an opportunity to think about what they're doing there. At number two, Clark Atlanta Panthers, three big wins since we talked about them. They mm. clipped the 20-win mark, 20-3, 20 and 14-3. Remember, they started off the season slow, so they've won like 13, 14 in a row. When I said season, I'm talking about mostly the conference race, uh, but you see what they've done since then in terms of getting it done. They have some big victories, uh, but they have a matchup against Miles that's leading the West Division next week, Wednesday, I should say, and they go on the road. That's a really good test, give you some indication of where Clark Atlanta is and how they close out things, 78 points. They move up a spot for number three, so they're playing and getting it done. At number one, Langston Lions, three wins. They just continue to roll. It's hard to talk about the accolades you give them, but we got to find a way to do it because they deserve it. 23-1, and 17-1, and one, all eight first place, 80 points. Um, and the intriguing thing was there was a major upset this week in the NII poll, and the number one ranked team went down. Mm. So we'll get a chance to see whether that will be the number one team in the poll and coming up next Monday if they can get the victory Saturday, obviously. Will they find a way to get up to the number one ranking in the nation in NIA top 25? So keep your eyes on that. I did want to put that out there. But with that being said, what are your thoughts in terms of top five in week number six, Charles? Uh, I think um, not this week. 
but next week. Uh, uh, I take a look at the Benedict Tigers. Uh, they were rolling until they had that little stretch where they went to Atlanta and Morehouse clipped them, then Clark clipped them. Uh, well, they get a little payback or they get a little revenge uh, in terms of Morehouse and Clark coming in next weekend. So uh, keep an eye out for those games with regards to Benedict, Morehouse, and Clark. Uh, I can't say enough about Langston. I mean, when you take a look at what they're doing, I mean, uh, just coming off a 90-54 to 54 win uh, this past Monday night. But interesting stat, uh, this is the 18th time this season that Langston has beat a team by 16 points or more. That tells you how dominant that they've been uh, this past season. Uh, got an interesting contest coming up against Wayland Baptist. Uh, Wayland Baptist uh, uh, did knock them off just last year, but they do have an impressive victory over Wayland Baptist a little bit earlier this season. But uh, you're talking about uh, uh, on the road uh, with regards to taking on Wayland Baptist. So it uh, should be very interesting to see uh, what Langston is going to continue to do. But like you said, they're playing lights out basketball and they got an opportunity uh, to, like you said, to move up to uh, number one uh, nationally. And let me be corrected. I said next Wednesday. That's actually at Miles and Clark Atlanta game is tonight. Uh, so that's got to be one that we got to keep our eyes on. I will be finding a way and see if I can find it. Is BCSN streaming that game? That's one of the ones we need to see you putting in some work. That's that's the one that we got to find a way to make sure you got your cameras down there. You know, that's always fair. And we put in a, a, a request. Maybe that's what we need to do is talk about where do you want us to come uh, with the show. Charles, we can put in our request. I have folks put in their request. As we talk about that matchup, I did want to give um, some love when you talk about what's going on. Xavier uh, Jones was awarded Red River Athletic Hoops Player of the Week. TJ Jones is playing some really good basketball. I'll tell you what that looks like. Uh, but when you talk about these key matchups, it's going to be fascinating when you go forward. Uh, Miles is just outside of the top seven. So when we talk about miles 17 and 5, 12 and 4 in that matchup, interesting to see where you're going there. Uh, Talladega Tornadoes sit at 19 and 5 and 9 and 3. Some good basketball playing over there in the GCAC. So fascinating to kind of see uh, what's going on in those matchups. The other thing about Langston, had a chance to see some highlights of one of their games. And the first highlight was them, you know, running in their sets, backdoor alley oop, Charles. Mm hmm. Took down the house. You know, the other team takes the ball, gets in, and gets past half court to get a steal. And so before you get to sit down in excitement from the last dunk, he races down the court, fast break. Woo cut. <laughs> Just the way basketball is supposed to be played. I love it. I love to see a throwback to yesteryear where you got teams pressing, creating turnovers, fast breaking. Man, it's just the way John McClendon wanted it. Like, yo, yo, <laughs> yeah, yeah, tell him, yeah, let, educate yeah, him. Yeah. Let him the game uh, in terms of what that looks like. You know what's another thing that's strange? If you heard that, you know, I told you about some of the key teams to keep your eyes on. I told you about the top five. Did you notice anything of uh, 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 those teams in there? The, you talked about on the women's side how it varied between all the conference and representation. What do you see on the men's side? We got we got the uh, SIAC represented. We got yes. the SCAC represented, Tech. and nothing and nothing from the CIAA. <laughs> mm -hmm. I knew you would get it. <laughs> Real wow! Busy. So the CIAA man, it's crowded. It's messy. You know, for the longest, when some Salem State was finding a way and looked like they were going to get it done, they've falling off the map, I don't, you know, some injuries there and just not playing good basketball. But overall, the CIAA does not have a dominant men's program this year. We are not used to seeing that in terms of the CIAA. So well, we have to come out of the tournament will represent them. Uh, but uh, what are your thoughts on not seeing the CIAA in terms of having a team that kind of dominate the conference? Well, I think that's a million dollar question because I was just about to say, what do you think you, uh, what is that attributable to in terms of the CIAA not really having a dominant team, not having a, a, a Winston Salem State or Virginia Union uh, Blue Blood program stick out? We probably have to call Stephen Gaither to get yeah. on that one, yeah. bring him in. But 
my synopsis is sometimes, you know, you just have those years uh, where you have, you know, Perry it doesn't league. quite go your way. You might get a couple of injuries and teams don't live up to the hype uh, for different reasons, changing on some coaches and nature. But you got a team where everybody is just equal. Um, obviously, you have the natural rivalries in the CIAA and how they're all close. Um, so that builds into it. But I think it's just one of the years where you just happen to not have a dominant program. That brings me to my follow-up question I wanted to ask you about the SIC. You have Miles. You have Morehouse. Benedict College, Clark Atlanta. Obviously, I, you got to believe you're going to get at least two of those teams in mm-hmm. to the tournament. Can they get three? If there's a good closing stretch, I believe they can get three. Uh, that's why I'm really paying attention to uh, this Benedict Morehouse Clark matchup coming up next week. I mean, to to see you know if, if there is a team that can really stick out a little, just a little bit more, where you can get that third team in. Is it possible to get Benedict in uh, if they go two and zero against uh, uh, two teams that have uh, knocked them off earlier? I teased out a little bit and I pushed it this week, but it's actually tonight. Uh, you have the Clark Atlanta Panthers traveling. To Morehouse. Morehouse is beat up on Clark Atlanta in the tournament. As Miles has dominated the SIAC tournament, winning, I think, the last three, uh, four to maybe the last five, but uh, they've really been able to get it done in the tournament. A lot of the weight of the conference was in the West. Um, Miles, and you had some mix up with Tuskegee being in the mix a couple of years. Tuskegee's obviously down, and all the play is, is seeming to be. Uh, again, with Clark Atlanta, Morehouse, and Benedict. But I'm fascinated to see and hear your thoughts in terms of this matchup tonight, 7.30 Eastern time, 6.30, uh, as they travel to Miles. You've been in there and called the game in terms of Birmingham and Fairfield to be specific. What are your thoughts in terms of this matchup? What makes it so tough for teams to come in to Miles College and be able to get out of victory? That home court advantage is real, and it's a raucous environment. I thoroughly enjoyed myself uh, at Miles. I mean, you can let a ball roll out of bounds if you want to. Student section is going to be right there in your face like, hello. <laughs> <laughs> I, I loved it. I loved it. I mean, uh, they have a true home court advantage. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's all hands on deck when you go into Miles because uh, – you know, I, I don't know, the custodian might start uh, chirping at you. So it, it's, it, it's just a great environment. I like it. I like it. You know, I'm going to have to give some love uh, to Tougaloo Bulldogs of uh, Mississippi before we close out on this segment. As I said, they are in that top five. They had yeah. a hell of a run last year. Yeah. They won uh, the national championship. It looks like it'll be hard to clip Langston. But, you know, we were kind of rooting to see if they would clash in the tournament. I think they were a game or two away yeah. last year for making it happen and, and finding themselves in a quarterfinal, semifinal type matchup that would have taken place. Obviously, everybody's talking about Langston making a deep run. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts about Tougaloo? Is they uh, uh, really on a nice run now? They're 21 and four, as I said, 10 and 2 yeah. in the conference. Uh, what do you believe? I know you really have a lot of respect for the coach. Yeah. So, and they have tournament experience. They went last year. Yeah. Right? So it's not like they're going to be intimidated about getting back in the NI tournament and they have some comfort level about being in a tournament. What do you think they can get done? Hey, you speak on, uh, in terms of comfort level because now for five, six, seven years or more, we've seen Tougaloo really with a tremendous basketball program. Yeah. Uh, of course, they've taken it to the next level over the past <laughs> uh, season and now. Start off just a, a tad slow this year. Uh, but they've really kicked it into gear. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm keeping an eye out on, on what the Bulldogs can do, especially uh, postseason, if they can get there, yeah. Yeah, that's one of the things that I continue to see, particularly on the NIA team. It, you kind of know the teams that are there. Now our question about them is not so much what they're going to do in the regular season. We're comfortable with Xavier. We're comfortable with Langston. We're comfortable with Tougaloo in terms of them going to be in the top part of the conference, likely to win a conference championship. If not, they're going to finish, you know, second place. They're going to make a deep run in their tournament. They have a chance to win the tournament. But I think the eyes on these three programs, uh, maybe one or two on the outside, but specifically these 
three programs. We're looking to see what they're going to do in the NIA tournament. Yeah. Exactly. How deep of a run can they go, right? Uh, can they make a deep run? Programs. These are mm-hmm. nationally type ranked programs, if you would, top 25, right on the outside of it if they're not in there. Uh, and that is, you know, week to week, kind of how people are voting. But certainly on the end of the season, they find themselves in the top 25 in a position to get some really good seating. So I'm fascinated to see what type of tournament run they can have. Yeah, no doubt about it. Like you said, those are uh, three teams that really keep an eye on moving forward. Uh, man, we're almost here in the midst of conference tournament play, March Madness. It seems like the season started just yesterday. Wow. Perfect segue. We're going to take a next break. We'll come back and we'll talk about the major division side and some of these key matchups. So look at, we'll talk about the MIAC, we'll talk about the SWAT key matchup, see where Charles uh, wants you to keep your eyes on what direction he said you need to look at amongst you celebrating your own team. We even sneak out and see if we can see what Tennessee State is doing. They took a tough loss uh, this past Tuesday, and I asked you in that matchup, you know, were some concerns them playing Tuesday when they normally play on Thursday? We didn't think so at the time, but I don't know if that was part of it, but they couldn't get it going in Cookville on the road against Tennessee Tech. So they fall at some upset a little bit in terms of where they are ranking. So we're going to talk about can they rebound on Saturday with that matchup. Obviously, uh, we can look at North Carolina A&T on the women's side, tell you where they are as we kind of hunt down and see what takes place. Uh, They play tomorrow and then Sunday, uh, and then we'll talk about some of those matchups as well. So stick with us. We'll be right back and tell you about the major division, some games that we need to keep your eyes on. Uh, key matchups this weekend coming up. Itchy, squirmy, scratchy, family not getting clean. Get Charmin Ultra Strong. Go get them. It just cleans better. With a diamond weave texture, your family can use less while still getting clean. Goodbye, itchy squirm. Hello, clean bottom. (laughs) We all go. Why not enjoy the go with Charmin? At Hampton Law, our primary goal is to provide non-traditional yet effective solutions and redefine the approach to client legal concerns. As your trusted legal advisor, we believe in sophisticated, personalized services that eliminate the confusion and complexity sometimes associated with legal matters. Our high standard for client care and concern, coupled with our extensive legal knowledge and skills, make Hampton Law a resource focused on the protection of the client's interest and overall goals. We value our clients and truly enjoy working with them. Visit thamptonlaw.com to conveniently schedule an appointment online. Tamika Hampton Esquire, 1631 Rock Springs Road, Suite 336, Apopka, Florida, 407 494-1471 494-1471 thamptonlaw.com Nope Nope Come on, him? Ooh, I like him <laughs> Quick, the quicker picker-upper Bounty picks up messes quicker, and each sheet is two times more absorbent, so you can use less. He's an eight. He's a nine. Bounty, the quicker picker-upper. From novice to aficionado, find yourself here. High-quality cigars plus personal customer service. Slow Burn is Waco's only mobile cigar lounge, featuring a meticulous curated collection of premium cigars. Visit our website, www.slowburnwaco.com. That's www.slowburnwaco.com. When it comes to professional learning, teachers deserve better. From the leader in online learning, Stride brings you the Stride Professional Development Center, an on-demand library of mobile-friendly courses that gives teachers choice and flexibility, allowing them to learn anytime and anywhere. Our dynamic courses provide bite-sized learning and help educators advance their knowledge while also gaining professional development hours. It's time you take charge of your learning. Visit us today to get started. Compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they're going to tell you if your team, if they want to love yeah, and who's about, who's about. So listen to Professor Yes Sir, yes, sir. and pay attention because he's going to teach a lesson. Yes. 
This is Dr. Bill inside the HBCU Sports Lab, looking at some of the major division matchups uh, coming up today. Obviously told you, usually you would have uh, Tennessee State on the women's side having a, a very challenging season. Usually they play on Thursday. They played on Tuesday and um, didn't fare too that well along with the men in terms of Texas Tech. But let's go to the Coastal. Uh, we have North Carolina a and uh, We know what they're doing with their record. They're sitting at 9-2. and two. They're tied with Stony Brook, uh, and they face Hampton. Hampton is just the opposite. Hampton is at 2-9 and nine and 2-19 and 19 overall, while a and is 15-7. and seven. Hampton Pirates, the Lady Pirates, travel to Greensboro for this matchup. I yeah. don't think we have to really worry about it. I think the question yeah. is just how bad is a and going to treat uh, uh, their family members there, the cousins, if you want to call it. Yeah. Obviously, they want to keep Chase. The big matchup is really probably Sunday when they play Monmouth, uh, that sits at 14 and 8 overall, mm -hmm. and just two games behind them in the loss co column, sitting at 7 and 4. With that being said, uh, HBCU matchup between AT uh, and North Carolina, I mean, in terms of Hampton, I should say. Or Mama, what are your thoughts in terms of this matchup? Yeah, I think the big challenge is to not look past Hampton. Uh, you know, I think uh, um, to, to uh, not look past Hampton and, and, and looking forward to playing Mama, like you said, I think that's going to be the big matchup. Uh, but uh, when you talk about North Carolina A&T this past season on the women's side, they've been playing some tremendous basketball. And week in, week out, you know, the Aggie fans make a case. Like, we, we don't care what you're saying about – Jackson State in terms of their dominance in the swag, we probably have a team that can knock them off. So it's very interesting to watch and see what they do uh, uh, against Mama. Good point. When you talk about getting outside of the conference, looking at HBCUs, we talked about top five with both Jackson State and T in that, and at the top of the top five for that matter. Uh, but with that being said, uh, I'm intrigued in if they can get through this weekend, particularly that matchup uh, on Sunday against Mama. Uh, as it's on the road, uh, they get the next week, you start getting into that, looking at Stunning Brook. Do they have a chance to get it done? Can they finish the regular season and crown and get that championship? Last year, remember, they were right on the edge, playing really good, stumped their toes late in the season, and they finished outside of that and really um, probably disappointed in a lot of ways. So I'm sure they have a lot of interest in finishing the season and getting it done. With that being said, let's – oh, go ahead. You want to comment? No, on? no, no, no. I, I, I was thinking, I was, is that game in Greensboro or is that Stony Brook? That Stony Brook game, I believe it's in – where is that game? I think it's next Sunday. Looking at that, a and is at Elon. Is that that March 1st, Stony Brook? Wow, Sunday. It's a ways off. Is that that last game? It's pretty much the last game. Okay. It's March 3rd. Yeah. But to your point, guess where it's at? It's on the road. Oh, okay. All right. Interesting. We <laughs> got a couple of that. weeks. We got a little while, so you never know. Teams can stub their toes. I'm going to take a deeper look and maybe look at Stony Brook's conference and see when they play Monmouth, uh, a couple of other teams, to see what they're looking about closing their season. So it's fascinating there. But let's go to the MEAC Saturday and Monday contest uh, in terms of what's going on there. I want to see some of these teams in the matchup. Obviously, when you look at records, you have Norfolk State sitting at 17-5, and 16-1. They want to get in that conversation, Charles, in regards to Jackson State and A&T. They believe that they have one of the best programs out there. Obviously, what they've done over the last couple of years, they certainly can stake a claim to that. But they want to say about this year's program, too. I think they had that one loss that really kind of flustered a lot of folks as they were John on there. But because of that, we've forgotten that they've actually uh, righted the ship. They're sitting six and one in conference play, mm. uh, seventeen and five overall. So they have some intriguing matchups. They had a game against South Carolina State. Shouldn't be a problem there. Much like we talked about A and T, South Carolina State women are struggling. They have one win on the season, one and twenty one overall, and zero and seven in the conference race. But then on Monday, you have North Folk State taking on North Carolina Central. That's I'm sure the that's the matchup that that's you want for yeah. me to get to yeah. and say, ah, yeah, all that other stuff is good. Central comes in at five and two, really playing some good basketball. They haven't really been in the hunt over the last couple of seasons, but you can see they're confident. They're 11 and 11 overall lets you know just how 
talented this team is and how they're really playing in that matchup. They sit at five and two in terms of what that looks like. So I want your thoughts in terms of that particular game, Norfolk State, North Carolina Central Eagles. If you had to, which direction are you going? Uh, can we get uh, upset uh, with Central going on the road, getting it done in Norfolk? Or is that yeah. asking a bit much? Um that might be asking for a bit much, uh, especially when we talk about a player of the caliber of Diamond Johnson. Uh, and I think these are the type of games she looks forward to. Uh, Monday night, it's already going to be, uh, I think, uh, a tremendous audience. I think that's, if I'm not mistaken, an uh, ESPN game uh, with the men. But uh, looking forward to that being a nice atmosphere with regards to North Carolina Central and Norfolk State. But I got to go with Norfolk State now. So that's the one that I'm looking forward to. Uh, this Monday night. Don't think they'll have an issue whatsoever with Norfolk State. Uh, Central and Howard, that, that one could get a little squirrely on Saturday. Um, kind of paying a little bit of attention to that one as well because Howard's right there on the heels, uh, at roughly four and three if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but uh, Central can't overlook Howard to get to Norfolk State. I put it that way. Yeah, I think that's what makes it also more challenging for the Eagles, but maybe they'll be in that position where they're so hyped they play, you know, Howard. Howard just comes in 18 and 13 overall, but they're a very solid program. This is a program that uh, won the championship uh, a couple of years ago. Um, so there's some pedigree in terms of their expectation, and they're playing some good basketball, at least in conference play, sitting at five and two. So you got two five and two teams matching up with yeah. Central and Howard. Uh, man, you're talking about needing to really have a good weekend. The thing about for Central is they play both of those games on the road. Yeah, Howard mm -hmm. and then Norfolk State. So this is a chance for Eagles to make a major statement, uh, at least getting one of these games. If not finding a way to get both, boy, you'll be talking about, wow, really? Yeah. With that being said, let's go over to the SWAC and find a little intrigued about some matchups and get your thoughts on what's going on in the SWAC world, the thing on the women's side, uh, about the key matchups this weekend. You know, last Monday, everybody wanted to talk about the Pine Bluff and Jackson State, rightfully so. Jackson State made a statement, in my opinion, in terms of getting it done on the road against the Gold and uh, Lions, but intriguing about those matchups in terms of uh, where people stand. So I'm interested with Jackson State sitting at 11 and 0, 8 and 3, Grambling State right behind them, the women at 8 and 3. So, what direction are you going with some of these key matchups? It's intriguing because you can look at top matchups maybe this weekend in terms of teams that are in the upper end, or you can talk about maybe some tough road games in terms of rivalry over the year. You got Grambling, obviously, at Texas Southern. Texas Southern's playing well. I can't forget about FAMU. FAMU is playing some really good basketball for the last five, yeah. and they get a chance to make a statement. It's yeah. on the road. Um, I'm interested to see. Maybe not so much if they can win the game. Obviously, they go in there with that attitude. Yeah. But can they keep it close? We saw what happened to Southern. Southern was right there until late in that matchup, and Jackson State said, all right, we're tired of this, and pulled away. Uh, but they've seen some maybe some chinks here and there. You talked about it all year long. I say don't worry, but you told me, hey, be careful, be careful. Yeah, and honestly, Florida a and is playing some good basketball. They've won three in a row. Uh, Ariana Grizzle, she's, she's the real deal. Uh, she leads the swack and scoring. And what I first turned my head with this Florida a and women's basketball team uh, was early in the season. I looked up and the score was 34-34 at halftime with Jackson State uh, when they played them down there in Tallahassee. Jackson State had to finish and kick in the third and four quarters, but uh, this is a good basketball program that's ascending. Uh, like I said, they won three in a row. So that's an intriguing game for me in terms of watching FAMU and Jackson State. And I'll tell you the other intriguing game, uh, to be very honest, is, is Grambling and Texas Southern. And, I, and you look at Texas Southern record, uh, it, it doesn't, uh, you know, make you do backflips. But uh, this is a team that I think, you know, they're starting to have some belief in each other, and especially when you get a win on the road and you're such a young team. Uh, and one of the things, you know, I, I found out a little bit about them, they're figuring out their roles a little bit more and and they're trying to, you know, uh, for lack of better words, adhere to those roles to help them get some W's. And I think this is a, a good test this weekend with Grambling and Southern coming into Texas. 
Want to switch gears, talk about a little bit on the men's side, go back to the independent matchup, Tennessee State, uh, Western Illinois. Western Illinois sits at eight and four. They actually play tonight, you know, with the matchup. Uh, we'll see if they're going that game easy. And they play Tennessee Tech on the road, uh, as you just saw that Tuesday game uh, with Tennessee State that we talked about. They lost, and they lost big. They lost that. Uh, they were down by 20 points in the game. But it'd be interesting to see in that matchup. It's an important matchup in terms of the standings uh, with uh, Western Illinois that can come in there eight and five. So both teams would be eight and five if that's the case. Uh, you would want that victory. Uh, essentially would be um, four games behind Moorhead if Moorhead continues and they win today. The uh, but uh, you're talking about seeding now. You want to get in that top four yeah. uh, for the tournament. Uh, if you can get up in there as high as you can. So give me your thoughts in terms of this matchup between Western Illinois and Tennessee State on Saturday. Uh, uh, Western Illinois coming into Nashville? Yeah, in terms of that, they got to go into Nashville. Okay. Western yeah. Illinois got to go into Nashville. Remember, Tennessee State won that game on the road earlier right, right, in the right, season. Right. So this is the second place. Yeah, I do like uh, Tennessee State in terms of how, how they match up versus Western Illinois. So I do expect uh, Tennessee State to get the W. And like you said, that finishing kick right about now. You want to get into those higher seeds going into uh, a tournament play. Yeah, let's switch over a little bit to the MEAC. Uh, get some views in terms of the key matchups on the men's side that you want to keep your eyes on in terms of what's taking place there as things get going, obviously. Uh, when you look at that matchup in the standings, you got Howard sitting at four and three, uh, North Carolina Central at five and two. So that means you're just a game back. That's a Saturday matchup. We talked about it on the uh, women's side. Now you got on the men's side. So if you and Howard, you got some really good basketball, nice matchup, uh, both that you can go in there and get there early and see the women's game and stay for the men's games. Not bad when you get the double double in terms of both teams playing well. In the ranking of that, that's one that you want to keep your eyes on. And unlike you have it on the women's side where you don't expect mo much from South Carolina State's women's program, the men's program is doing not too bad. They're sitting at four and three. So they're just a game back when you talk about Norfolk State. South Carolina State goes on the road over there to Norfolk State. So I'm intrigued about this one as well. Uh, mm. Between the two, which direction are you going? Uh, North Carolina Central cannot look past Howard. Uh, get into Norfolk State. I think this is a, a pivotal weekend uh, for North Carolina Central. These are two uh, really good matchups, Howard and then Norfolk State on Monday night national TV audience. Ooh, if, North, if Central comes out of this 2-0, oh, oh, boy. Oh, yeah, you, you kind of lock it up. Yeah. Uh, you talking about doing it on the road. As you said, the Monday game is on ESPN, too, so I'll be checking that out. This game has been a classic for some years, whether it's in the tournament, regular season, uh, they've been you know, the pecking hand. Obviously, for a while, it was North Carolina Central. Mm -hmm. Norfolk State finally kicked in that door. They've controlled uh, the belly of the beast, if you would. Now, it, is the is it turning a little bit for the Eagles? We should Ooh, see. We got yeah. it early. It was at home. It went down to the wire. But this is a way to take a statement. And you got Howard that says, hey, we did win everything last year, so don't think yeah. we know how to play football. I mean, basketball, we certainly know how to coach it. And I, maybe we can say they know a little bit of football as they played in the uh, cricket celebration bowl. But with that being said, a whole nother sport. But we always got to find a way to, you know, turn it back to football. football. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but with that being said, Biak, uh, before I get too busy here, you tease it out. Can Central get it done? Yes. Yes, they can. Uh, you're talking about a, a basketball team year in, year out. Uh, they're right in the thick of things. Can they get it done? Yeah, they can get it done. But uh, what my question, Doc, is what would be the better split, uh, Norfolk mm. State or Howard? Ooh, that's a tough one. I think you, if if you want to do it, you probably want the Norfolk split. You got to believe that Norfolk is going to find a way to reel out some games. You got the first one against Norfolk, so now. That means you got two, so you it gives you the edge in the tiebreakers. You only have to go down the point differential. Mm. Um, so I think if you had to split them, the split that you want is going to be against Norfolk State. What's fascinating though, if, if Howard's able to get one of those, you know, it puts them right back in the race where they're tied up in the face because now you're talking about teams with three losses. So great question when you talk about what does that look like. I'm intrigued 
let's get into some of these matchups as we start to close it up. Uh, SWAC uh, conference uh, in a lot of ways. Where are you going with your toughest matchups of the weekend? That Grambling, Texas Southern, Southern Texas Southern, I think is probably going to be at the top of your list. Anything outside of that can even tease you to keep your interest on there. Or are you going to be solely focused over there in H and P Arena? Ooh. Short drive for you, so you get to be in the action and sit up there in your normal spot and kind of glaze and say, "All right, this is what took place when we come back on Tuesday." And give everybody your insight. Monday is going to be Clash of the Titans because we, we got Central and, and, and Norfolk State over there in the MEAC, and then we're going to have Southern and Texas Southern over here in the SWAC. Uh, wow, you talk about the odds of Monday night. Woo, what's going to happen on Monday night? So these, these are some, some great matchups. I'm looking forward to them, uh, especially, wow, Southern is playing some great basketball right now. And they got the Texas two-step this weekend. And get Purview on Saturday. Always tough place to play. And then they come to the H&P arena on, on Monday night. So, woo, this is good stuff. And then, uh, you know, uh, just off the radar, just off the radar, you know, Florida a and at Jackson State. Florida a and started at Jackson State mm-hmm. swoon. Uh, yeah. So uh, the question becomes, Great can ball. Jackson State get back on uh, – uh, can they get their uh, uh, their their lick back in on FAMU? So uh, that'll be interesting to watch uh, this upcoming Saturday. Oh, good stuff, good stuff. I'll tell you what, Charles. I got have and be out there and represent for college education dean. There, our students are getting recognized as they get in the ed preparation program. So excited about that. Um, so I'm bringing the popcorn maker out there. So I certainly will bring the popcorn. I'll bring the iPad. Nice. Um, so we can sit down there and keep our eyes in both directions as we go back and forth and break things down. We might sneak out and even do a quick video and tease folks a little bit on FaceTime or something like this to put it out there, be different about it. We certainly will text and maybe even tweet a couple of things. With that being said, let's call it a show. Great information you provided today, Charles. Way to be on top of it. Thank you for listening to Inside the HBCU Sports Lab. Make sure you share our podcast with your friends and colleagues. I am Dr. Kiana Kabil. The Dean of HBC Sports coming from inside the lab in the College of HBC Sports with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. Again, we want to thank you for listening to Dr. Mills Inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop every Tuesday and Thursday at 6 o'clock. Uh, we gave you a special edition show on Wednesday about baseball. Go check it out. Charles did tremendous with some of those individual interviews, and then I got a chance to tease out some stuff. So great uh, information for those that get excited about baseball. If you're around here, get into some basketball. The evenings, you can get into some baseball as well. Uh, either side, you have some big-time game starting tomorrow at Friday, 11 o'clock, 3 and 7. Same times on Sunday when you have the rivalry matchups on Saturday and then on Sunday to close things up. Should be fascinating with a lot of other mixes uh, for people around here, so I'm excited about that. We look forward to next week. We'll discuss the latest news in the lab. We'll tell you how everything played out. On Tuesday, you'll know by then, but we'll tell you what we thought about it and why inside the HBC Sports Lab 1 on X, formerly known as Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube is inside the HBC Sports Lab, D-R-K-E-N-Y-A-T-T-A-C-A-V-I-L on X, formerly known as Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Dream big. Continue to move forward. We will talk with you soon. Of course, Charles. Lecture. Dismissed.